To him who overcomes I will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 7. Promises to the overcomer. 2. The paradise of God. Understandably, this promise to the overcomer takes us back in our minds to the beginning of creation with the mention of the tree of life and paradise. But the promise itself actually takes us far beyond the original paradise in the Garden of Eden. It is important to note that the promise says the paradise of God, not the paradise of man. Adam in the garden before the fall of man was not in a state of righteousness or justification. This was not yet required as sin had not yet entered. He was in a state of innocence. These are two different things. One is the absence of sin, the other a standing in subsisting righteousness before God. Since the fall of man, we are not taken back to the Garden of Eden, but to the paradise of God. The heavenly paradise is mentioned three times in the New Testament, Luke 23, 43, 2 Corinthians 12, 4, Revelation 2, 7. This is important, for some have envisioned simply an earthly paradise restored to its original condition, but this falls short of the reality. Adam, in innocence, was exposed to temptation from Satan and thus to potential ruin. But through Christ, the power of Satan has been broken for us, as is the power of death. The new creation state will be a fixed state, which means there can be no exposure to a future fall. It is eternal. Satan will be banished forever. Sin will never enter to defile that scene. The promise to the overcomer does not take us back to merely an earthly paradise, but to something much higher, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1, 4. If you have not yet stopped to give thanks to the Lord today for what he has promised and prepared for us, John 14, 2, now would be a good time to do it. Blessed be his name, Brian Reynolds.